My name is Dadang Herli Saputra, and in this video, I will be explaining about a journal titled The Role of Psycholinguistics in Language Learning and Teaching from the Tell Journal, Volume 6, Number 1, written by Nurita Purba. This journal, I have chosen to fulfill the assignment for the Psycholinguistics and Second Language Acquisition course supervised by Dr. Murti Ayu Wijayanti MPD in the English Language Master's Programme, Sultan Agung Tirtayasa University. Psycholinguistics, as its name implies, is the study of language and its elements from a psychological point of view, and not the study of psychological problems from a language point of view. Before I move on to the main topic of this presentation, it would be better to first answer the question, what is the definition of psycholinguistics? The definition of psycholinguistics is of course related to the definition of psychology and the definition of linguistic. I will now present the definition given by several experts. First, Herbert Clark and Eve Clark, in their book titled Psychology and Language, defined psycholinguistics as fundamentally the study of three mental processes, the study of listening, speaking, and the acquisition of the skill by children. Evelyn Hatch sees psycholinguistics from the perspective of a second language and defined it as the search for an understanding of how humans are able to comprehend and produce language. The field uses the strengths of two disciplines, psychology and linguistics. In Sub Taylor and Martin Taylor, in their book titled Psycholinguistics Learning and Using Language, defined psycholinguistics as a marriage of psychology and linguistics. Michael Garman in his book Psycholinguistics said that psycholinguistics, as its name implies, is basically concerned with language as a psychological phenomenon, and most characteristically with language in the individual. If we take a look at these definitions, despite being different from one another, they emphasize one important thing, namely the relationship between linguistics and psychology. Very well. I will now move on to explain or review about the role of psycholinguistics in language learning and teaching, written by Norita Purba. This particular topic is very interesting and has always been discussed in the learning and teaching of English as a foreign language in Indonesia. As additional materials to strengthen the explanation on the review of the journal The Role of Psycholinguistics in Language Learning and Teaching, I will also be using some references that I have learned during the course of the first semester, some of which includes An Introduction to Psycholinguistics by Danny D. Steinberg and Natalia V. Ciarini, Psychology and Language, An Introduction to Psycholinguistics by Herbert Clark and Eve Clark, and other references concerning psycholinguistics from Evelyn Hatch, Michael Garman, Insep and Martin Taylor, and others. Firstly, a brief explanation on psycholinguistics. Psycholinguistics is simply defined as the study of the relationship between human language and human mind. In short, three important processes are investigated in psycholinguistics. Those three are language production, language comprehension, and language acquisition. Psycholinguistics also attempts to answer many questions, however, it specifically addresses only two. One, what knowledge of language is needed for us to use language? And two, what cognitive processes are involved in the ordinary use of language? Next is about language learning and language acquisition. There are two types of language learning, which are naturalistic and formal language learning. Naturalistic language learning is learning a language naturally, consciously, and unintentionally. This usually occurs in bilingual or multilingual society. On the other hand, formal language learning takes place in the classroom with teachers, materials, and learning aids. Now, during this presentation, the term language learning will be used to refer to the processes of a person in mastering a second or a foreign language in a formal education setting. Some students learn a new language more quickly and easily than others. This fact is related to the crucial factors influencing success that are largely beyond the control of the learner. Lightbone and Spada identified some factors that affect language learning, which are intelligence, aptitude, learning style, personality, intrinsic motivation, extrinsic motivation, culture and status, and age. Now I will explain about psycholinguistics and the four language skills. 
So what are the four language skills? Well, psycholinguistics theories have explained the mental processes that occur in human brain when a person produces or perceives a language. Language perception includes the activity of listening and reading, while language production includes the activity of speaking and writing. The four activities are what is called as the four language skills. I will now describe some benefits of psycholinguistics theories in language learning and teaching. First, psycholinguistics approach and listening skills. Psycholinguistics knowledge will help teacher in reducing intrinsic and extrinsic difficulties. Teacher can prepare a listening text with topic that is familiar to students, consisting of 100 words and including 10 new vocabulary items. Teacher also minds about the reading speed and the noise of the environment. Moreover, teacher can increase students' interest and motivation by designing an interesting and comfortable class. Second, psycholinguistics approach and reading skills. This theory emphasizes that understanding the meaning of a text essentially rests on the prior knowledge of the students. Psycholinguistics helps learners reduce intrinsic difficulties in reading activity by arousing the interest of the students in the reading text. Teachers need to provide authentic and contextual reading materials. This is because if students are not properly exposed to authentic materials, they may fail to see their relevance to the real world. Third, psycholinguistics approach and writing skills. Psycholinguistics approach indicates that there are mistakes in writing caused by agraphia, which must be treated properly. Psycholinguistics also helps in finding interesting topic to write and decrease the level of difficulties in writing. Furthermore, psycholinguistics helps to specify writing levels and writing types and pins down the mechanic mistakes on punctuation and suggests certain cures for them. Fourth, psycholinguistics approach and speaking skills. Psycholinguistics has specified several difficulties on speaking, such as students' oriented difficulty. Psycholinguistics also explains that personality, like introvert and extrovert, affects students' performance in language learning. Speaking defects, like voice disorders, stuttering, and disarticulation, are also psychological in origin, caused by personality factor. There are also some traumatic disorders, such as aphasia and autism. With this knowledge, Teachers can apply the appropriate techniques to teach speaking skills by considering the condition of the learner and find interesting topics to be discussed in speaking class. And now moving on to the explanation on language teaching methods of psycholinguistics approach. Psycholinguistics has been used widely as fundamental theory in developing language teaching method. According to Haras and Andika, there are three methods which were developed based on psycholinguistics approach. Firstly, natural method, which believes that language learning is a reproduction of the way humans naturally acquire their native language. Teachers stimulate the learners to competence activity, such as problem solving, games and humanistic affective. Secondly, total physical response method, which believes that there is a positive correlation between physical movements and students' language achievement. It becomes the focus in designing and applying appropriate language teaching technique in a certain topic. Thirdly, suggestopedia, where humans are directed to do something while giving them a relaxed atmosphere and opened and peaceful mind. And that would conclude the explanation on the role of psycholinguistics in language learning and teaching. I hope that this topic has been an interesting and useful one. Thank you.